views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Let's talk about your juicy love with me, Una Drake. We explore relationships, dating, sacred union, communication, conscious love, healthy boundaries, and much more. As a dating and relationship coach for over five years, with a background in shamanic healing and metaphysical work, I've helped men and women, young and old, from all walks of life. My mission is to increase peace, joy, and love on planet Earth. So listen in and stay juicy. Hi. I'm Una Drake, and uh, I'm here with David and Miri. Um, David, uh, David, your video just went away, um, or it's, but I'm here with, <laughs> there he is, now he's back. I'm here with David and Mary, and David is a, uh, an expert in Tantra and spiritual awakening. Hi, David, glad to have you with us. Hi, Una. It's a pleasure to be here with you, despite the technical chaos we're experiencing. This is amazing. Indeed. I really love when things are not how we expect. I think surprises are one of the really amazing, juicy things that gives us an opportunity to just really be, bam, right here in the midst of things that are a mystery that we don't know about and to be open. Absolutely. In fact, uh, the title of this episode is Triggers, Tantra, and Sacred Union. And, um, you know, yeah, triggers happen sometimes when things don't go right. And it's all about how you respond to that, right? That's so, exactly what's, I'm triggered right now. I mean, <laughs> and it's amazing. And I am in Sacred Union right now with you, with everyone who's out there with this little computer I'm unfamiliar with and with with my own heart that is feeling that is racing a little bit because, Oh my God, we're about to do the podcast and Oh, and I have to get a, the technology right. And I had a problem with my computer today. And <laughs> sacred union is not just with an embodied beloved who we're practicing Tansha or having a relationship with. It's really between us and everything. That's what I mean by awakening. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, could I, uh, could I get you to hold your microphone a little bit closer to your, to your mouth? Um, I love it. I'm not actually there holding you it. There you go. I'm wondering, is that helpful? Yes. Yes, it I does. I Thank do you. On the wire of this. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> we'll figure this out. Um, so, yeah, so a lot of times we don't want to be triggered. We go through so much trouble to not get triggered. And we think of triggered as being a really negative experience and a really bad thing. And your approach, because you have this class called Trigger Happy, Welcoming and Working with Triggers. And uh, so tell us a little bit about that. You know, no, welcoming you're... with triggers, welcoming triggers. I mean, really? What's that? It's like I'm triggered. Help. I hate this. I would just want to get rid of it. I want to get rid of you, any person, place or thing that's triggering me. I think the problem is out there. Or if I even have any sense that some part of it is inside the part about me being triggered, I think I just... I hate that this is happening. I'm ashamed and embarrassed that this is happening. I'm scared that this is happening. And I just want to get rid of it immediately. And it's kind of, that's a perfectly natural response to an uncomfortable experience. In fact, it's an automatic response, but it's actually not helpful. It's taking us in the opposite direction of what we actually want in order to shift our energy, reconnect with ourselves. And we'll talk about that because the triggers are actually something is disconnecting us from ourselves and our resources. And so what we want 
is more connection and we have to turn back towards the things we're resisting, avoiding or reacting to. That's the most, that's the quickest way back to the place where we feel good again. <laughs> sure. So I get, I, I get that intellectually, but how do we do that? Like when we're actually feeling triggered, <laughs> that's what I want to know. Well, it's like amazing. Yeah. It's a deep well of like the answer to that is I'll give you the really quick answer and we have an hour. Maybe I can give you the medium answer too. The real answer to this, I, 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 I'm asking people for three and a half hours of their time on Tuesday <laughs> to really dive into this. And then I, I teach about this, you know, for weekends at a time. But to say, but the quick answer is good and worthwhile. And here it is. Uh, when we're disconnected, there's something that we think is happening that shouldn't be happening or something we want to happen that we're attached to happening that's not happening. And we're kind of in like resistance to the moment. We're trying to solve that sensation by going away from what's happening or we're rest by fighting with it. We're actually trying to do fight or flight with our own experience of this moment <laughs> is what's interesting. We're trying to run away from what we're experiencing or trying to fight it and beat it somehow. And both of those are not creating more connection. They're deepening the sense of disconnection. And if we want that sensation of feeling connected again, we have to turn back towards what we're uncomfortable about. And what's really interesting about this is a lot of times it's like some kind of a what can connect with really angry, really easy. It's like we're angry or we're frustrated or we're pushing on something or we're trying to control something and fix something. Those are kind of the surface reaction. What we're really resisting and avoiding usually is some kind of a vulnerable, tender emotion and experience. Like if we're feeling helpless or hurt or violated or some kind of grief or fear. Those are the ones we don't even want to notice we're feeling that. We just want to go straight to like anger or frustration or controlling something instead. So it's dropping in through the pedals. The only thing we can connect with, I say, is, is the top pedal of our experience, what's right there on the surface. And that leads us in, that leads us back into our self-connection. That's, that's wonderful. That's beautiful. Um, and so you're, you're saying that, that by acknowledging the emotions that we don't want to acknowledge and the, the feelings that are making us feel triggered, then we can become more present to ourselves and to our situation and actually connect in. So then we have more choice to choose how we're going to respond to the situation instead of responding from a, a, a triggered perspective. Is that That's what you're exactly right? And there's a couple of things I could add to that, unless you want to lead it off in another direction. Well, I know we, uh, we started this discussion a little bit faster than I wanted to <laughs> just because that's what was up, but let's reel it back and create some context. Here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Again, you know, I'm I'm really glad that you could be here today and I'd love for our listeners just to know a little bit about you and who you are and what your yeah. background is and your work. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my name is David Amiri. That's I M I R I and my website is passionateawakenings.com. It's got the S on the end like plural like passionate awakenings. And I've been doing coaching and counseling and body work for over 30 years. Uh, I have initials that I don't like to quote because I hope you never assign authority to anybody on that basis alone. Uh, I, I like when people make sense of things for themselves and see me for who I am and how they resonate with what I'm saying. But I have been doing this stuff a long time and my focus has always been on love relationships and trauma. And there's a big connection there, actually. And so I do coaching and counseling for couples and for individuals and path finding, like someone wants to find their way in life and bring forth more of their passion and their gifts and 
practically create a, a, a path towards making a livelihood out of it. Those are things I do, but really the core of the work is about relationships and communication and trauma. And it all comes back to connection, connection versus disconnection. And we can't really connect with anything except how we connect to ourselves. It's through connecting with ourselves that we actually connect with with others in the world around us. So uh, that led me really to the Tantra, which is the main focus, you could say, in my workshops. But I teach it very differently than I've experienced with other people. My little tagline is I say I teach Tantra as a path of awakening from the inside out. Meaning mm-hmm. that I don't have a lot of emphasis on things like practices and rituals and remember this and do it that way. And here's all the Hindu words and the theories from the past, which are beautiful. But my focus is in helping people find their inner self connection and how to connect authentically with others from there, how to follow the energy and what's really going on in Tantra and what's that got to do with awakening. Because that's the part I care about the most. That's that's wonderful. And uh, we are going to have to go to break, break pretty soon. But um, I'm guessing that um, that p- Tantra as a path of awakening ties in exactly with, um, you know, with uh, he- exactly what you were saying with healing triggers and in uh, in romantic relationships, trauma triggers, romantic relationships and Tantra. Yeah. Let's bring it together after the break. Um Thank you very much. This is Una Drake, and you're listening to Your Juicy Love. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety, you've probably noticed that the more you fight these emotions, the stronger they seem to get. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, explains that instead of suppressing, we need to identify and resolve the deeper, subconscious root causes of fear and anxiety. His personal breakthrough program has helped thousands worldwide to overcome their emotional challenges. To learn more, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com and schedule your free consultation with Dr. Schaub now. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Now you can be a part of one of the most powerful programs to help create a more joyful, loving, abundant, and peaceful world. Every day at 12 noon in any time zone, join millions of other people around the world to spend a few minutes in joy, love, and gratitude. Brought to you by Robert Schoenfeld, host of the Art of Powerful Living Radio. Together, we can raise the vibration of the planet. For more information, visit globalmomentofjoy.com. A word of caution, if you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Tune in to the hit show, Raging Skillet Radio, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world 
into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. All right, you're listening to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, and I'm here today with David and Mary. We're talking about triggers, tantra, and sacred union. All right, um, so David, um, on your website, uh, as part of this um, description for the Trigger Happy class that I was very intrigued by, you say, our triggers show us where our wounds and conditioning are. I'm talking trauma and punishment reward reactions. It's like we have a minefield and other people, places, and things step on them and set them off. Yep, that sounds like <laughs> triggers. So um, so can you get into that? Because you do have a background in, in helping people overcome trauma, uh, along with, of course, your work in Tantra. Um, so can you tell us about that? Tell us how you define triggers and how they're related to trauma and uh and then how do we get past those, you know, in, in, in a, in a practical sense, uh, you know, this is a, a big part of your work. So I'd love to just hear in more depth about your perspective on that. I will. Thank you. That's a great question. Uh, it is one of my very favorite topics. And like my work is really about awakening. I call myself an awakening coach and Tantra is a path of awakening, a non-dual path of awakening. We say, I won't go into what that is, but why this is important for awakening and what that I've realized about that is I think ego might be nothing but trauma. That's one way to look at it. It behaves the same exact way, having worked with trauma for decades, having worked with severe trauma. And we think trauma is a lot of times the image is, oh, my God, someone was, God forbid, raped or the RPG exploded next to me and killed my buddy. And those are traumatic. Those are severe, acute traumas. But most of the trauma that we carry in ourselves comes from prolonged relational predicaments where we have unmet needs, unmet or unmeetable needs. And it, it, that kind of distorts our sense of our identity and our sense of what to expect from the world. And we get cut off from our resources, you know, and there's there's always a living energy in us <clears throat> that's reaching for something that has its own impulse. The impulse of life has, we experience it as what we call our needs, values, longings, and desires. Those are the sources of the energy that's moving here, the living energy in us. It's like we, something, we get an impulse, we, there's a direction in it, and we can identify that as a need, value, longing, or desire, that's us, or that's our experience of ourselves. That's yeah. the real stuff in us. But there's all this other stuff that's also going on. What's that? So there's things which are interrupting our connection with ourselves, with that living energy. That's our beliefs, conditioning, identities, and trauma. That's my short list on that side of the fence. Those nice. are the things which disconnect us from ourselves. And if you really think about that and you notice that, they always do disconnect us from our immediate embodied sensory connection with ourselves and our environment right now. If we're resorting even to like a belief we have, the belief might be right or wrong. It might be helpful in some cases and not helpful in other cases. It's not bad to have beliefs. But we're referring to something that's like information in the hard drive instead of to our senses and what we can feel is true now, mm. what we can know for ourselves now. So it's actually interrupting. And boy, when we get traumatized by something, that tends to form a lot of beliefs and conditioning and finally like our identity. And our identities are just like images of ourselves. That's not the experience of ourselves. It's I'm a person who's like this and not like that. And I always have to try to be that way. And I think I'm not being myself when there's some other thing we're experiencing. And that disconnects us from the living energy of us right here and now. Sure. Because it's like it's like basically a tie to the past or it's like living kind of from the past instead of just being here in the present with what is. Exactly with that. Right. 
Okay. Exactly right. Which is where we are. We aren't our memories and our beliefs and some rigid conditioned or believed routines of behavior and responding. We're not even those images of who we are and who we aren't. It's much closer to who we are, like the things we're actually experiencing now. Yeah. And um, I'm thinking this is super relevant in this holiday season, for example, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, when a lot of us, you know, are dealing with, uh, you know, people that we may only see, you know, family members or old friends or old experiences, places, you know, that we may uh, only encounter once or twice a year. And that can be very triggering. That brings Um, it all up for us, the ways that the people we were around when we were really little and getting suppressed or conditioned or not seen in ways that were important to us. And that all starts to come back up. Plus the whole thing about it's a holiday. It's supposed to be the big celebration. And where's my birthday present? And where's the wonderful thing that I've been waiting for all the rest of the time? And so we're disappointed and sad. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, so let's make this like super practical and um and let's talk about like what would be your advice or guidance for someone going into, you know, a potential say let's just say family situation, you know, that they do find triggering and they know that there's going to be some um you know, some push and pull there uh with with or they maybe they don't know because it hasn't happened yet but they highly suspect <laughs> based on past experience that there's going to be some you know potential for triggering uh what do you recommend how do you deal with that here's what i want to say about that there's two things one is that like you're asking for me to give you like the quick fix and the advice and the what do i do like the the steps and i know people love that but you know it's really not my style and what, uh, because I, I think I'm doing the most rapid, deep, and effective work that I've seen anywhere. But it takes a little time to create the perspective and give people the landscape and the orientation. And that's where I start with people when I start in private sessions, is we're creating an orientation and a landscape and kind of finding one connection point at a time so that they can learn to navigate this the whole uh, territory of it more effectively. Now that I've said that, I can give you my best approximation of a, <laughs> a few things that people can do because you know you do need that. And <laughs> I'm thinking people are people are leaving for the you know on trips now. You know people I know. are going to leave on the holidays in the next few days. So and what I well what I would say about is that is take notes, research the way that you're triggered. Try to start mapping your triggers. Pay attention to who triggers you in what ways and what that feels like to you. And then come back to me and do a workshop or a private session and we really drill into what is that and where does it come from and how can you navigate that more effectively? If it were a client who were really serious about their inner work, that would be the advice at this level with this amount of time. To give you a little more than that, I would say self-connection and self-soothing. Like it's okay if you feel scared, if you feel hurt, if you feel helpless or vulnerable. Try to notice that that might be what's underneath, feeling angry, anxious, or frustrated. And try to maybe put a hand on your heart or slow down your breathing or take a little space for yourself if you need that. Excuse yourself to go to the bathroom and you don't have to know what you're doing, but you're just bringing yourself back to centeredness and connection and your heart presence. And try to have a little empathy for what do you think they really are needing and experiencing, even though they're being awful to you. Like, what is it that they really are trying to get in in some indirect way? And how can you at least see that through that lens so that then you're not so scared that they're attacking you? Then you see, oh, poor dear, it doesn't know how to meet their needs. (laughs) Those are some pieces of advice. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, self-soothing and uh, just getting present and Trying to bring the energy back into your body is, I mean, that's, that's what I recommend to people look a lot of for times. How, look for how you can get off the freight train of your own stories and narratives and habits about this situation with this person 
and look for how can you right now create more of what you do want. Mm-hmm. Whenever there's something you don't want, it's like hidden inside that is something you do want. Look for how can you move towards that? How can you get off the freight train of, well, blah, 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 you're always, or I can't even say it, or it's hopeless, uh, you know, and just like, wait a minute, how can I get more of what I do want, even privately to myself or in communication with another? Right, right. Okay. So um, I see that we are going to have to go to break pretty soon here. Um, But when we come back, I'd really like to talk about being triggered in a romantic relationship or an intimate relationship. Because, you know, we've just covered, uh, you know, how to deal with being triggered in like a kind of a family situation or a situation that you don't encounter all the time. But it's the holidays. So, you know, of course I wanted to cover that. I think it's really relevant. I don't for a think lot of we people. covered it. I think we opened the conversation and scratched the surface. <laughs> true, true. But this is your juicy love. So I want to get into the more intimate stuff and, uh, and, uh, you know, see how that, that dovetails with, uh, the tantric work that, that of course is a, is core to, to what you're all about. So because it's inevitable. We will be triggered with a significant other, isn't it? And we'll talk about that. Let's have yeah, that. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a, that's a huge, I think, um, path that, you know, anybody in an intimate relationship has to walk on a continual basis is, is navigating that, um, you know, potential for being triggered or being triggered and then getting back on course. So, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Um, You've been listening to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to affect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics. Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show. Joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down. Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. In this day and age, if you don't reinvent yourself, you may never find balance, peace, and the sustainable life that is your birthright. Angela Watson Robertson, known as the Reinvention Warrior and the host of Breakthrough Radio Show Masters of Reinvention, is here to help you reinvent every area of your life. Tune in and hear from the best in the personal transformation business and discover tips and tools for positive change. Live every month on Transformation Talk Radio. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. 
Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. All right, we're back. This is Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake. And today we're talking with David and Miri, and we're talking about triggers, tantra, and sacred union. So, um, David, can you tell us about how triggers come up and relate to our intimate relationships? I know you have a lot to say about that. Yes, this is kind of at the center of my work, really. And my workshop is coming up this weekend is the level one training, erotic devotion. We're doing it again in, in February, but this is the entry point of level one. It's all about this. And what I heard you say was that, oh, when the triggers come up in intimate relationships, how can we get back on track? And I want to just not to call you out, but people think that way. We do think we're off track when we're getting triggered. We're not. That's exactly what is inevitable, and that is an opportunity that is right on track. Um, entering into it is the way to do it because there's an amazing gift in it. The treasure is in the triggers, I say. And here's what that's about. Because in our in- most intimate relationships with a significant other, this is our beloved. This is the person we want the deepest, most connected love with. And so everything that comes up in this like love, sex and intimacy context is going to mirror our core separation wounds with source, because like Rumi and Hafiz say, that's like that's really the beloved. The beloved is everything and everywhere. What we really long for is union. We long for union. We long to experience that deep, loving connection with everything extending in every direction forever. That's like the deepest longing we have. And that's the longing for awakening. And we're focusing it on one person to try to have it in this love relationship. And there's something that's true and beautiful about that because that's the place where we can find it and the place that moves our hearts to open to it. But we're not actually going to get that kind of union from this person. We can't extract it from them but in that relationship, we get all kinds of wonderful things, the companion, the sex, the meeting each other's needs and having great times. But in our hearts, it's actually going to bring up all the issues about like where we still believe that something could separate us from love, where we still have conditions on it. We still think it's, it is limited. It needs to be limited. There's an edge to it. That's the edge of our, 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 our heart awakening. That's the edge. That's what's going on right now in our relationship with the larger beloved. And that's a mirror of it. And it's a way into it. And if we enter into that relationship with that mindset and we understand that when we're triggered, everything about the part about us being triggered, whether what someone's doing is good or bad or indifferent or could improve, that's out there. The part about us being triggered is inside us. Mm -hmm. And that's worth our attention Not just like to be self-responsible so we can fix it up and not, you know, act out on them, but because it's a key, it points us directly in to where we're separating, where we feel separate, where that trigger disconnects us from ourselves and from that love we're longing for, this ocean of love that surrounds and connects us always, no matter what our, our intimate partners are doing. Okay. And that's, that's the sacred union piece. Is that correct? That's the sacred union piece, because sacred union is not just with one person. It really never is. That could be the pinnacle of it. That could be the cherry on the cake. That could be our favorite place to experience it and where we get the deepest, most wonderful experiences. But what's opening there is a sacred union that is really starting in the center of our experience of ourself and moves out in all directions. We're just feeling that much more connected with ourselves and everything. Right. And in in 3D reality, like here in the real world, (laughs) I say that in quotes, air quotes, but you know that it's not even pander to that thing we say that way. This is the real world where we are living all the time is this maze of conditioned social beliefs. 
Yeah. And, and so it's, it's mostly in our, it's where we can see the mirror of our relationship with the divine or our relationship with the, the, the sacred union with everything, with, you know, all that is, is a lot of times we can see it, I think, the most in our relationship with our beloved, you know. That's it. It's painful. It really gets our attention because that's painful. We feel hurt. We feel our disconnection. We feel I'm longing for like total union. How come I'm not feeling that now with you? That's what I hired you for. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, we should notice what the first place there is to be back in union with is the top petal of our own blossom that's trying to open our own authentic, vulnerable feelings of hurt or disconnection or, or, or look, what's that? How can we, we go into a spirit of inquiry, into our loving curiosity about the, what's in our own experience and what's in our connection with the other and explore that with an open mind and an open heart? <sighs> what is happening? That's reconnecting right there. We're getting it then. <laughs> that's wonderful. Okay. And so that's, that's a big part of your work, right? It's like in the, yes. how to do that or the, the oh, practice exactly. of that on a day exactly in, day out. That. Exactly. Okay. That. In things that look like Tantra, sitting together, looking in each other's eyes, running energy, but also most importantly, what is the basis and the foundation for that? How is that not limited to times we are sitting in a special Tantra session what, the, where the Tantra is, is in the foundation, not in the exercises. Okay. And the foundation, you mean the, can you, can you just go into that? You mean the, yeah. the it's our, or, our re orientation to our own experience and how we see that as an expression of our inquiry and our path of awakening, how we see that as a journey of re reconnecting having that love relationship with the beloved, starting with ourselves and with everything we encounter, because Tantra is, it's not a sexual, you know, variation. It's not a sexual practice at all. It's a spiritual practice that includes sexuality and all the other parts of us. And it's a lifestyle of cultivating that intimacy with the beloved and those feelings of love and connection continuously. And that's just the cherry on the cake when we get to experience really ecstatic, deep states with our, our love partner. That's wonderful. And uh, so getting back to how this relates to uh, triggers, would you say that when we are triggered, that's a, a path or like that's like a little wake up call to understand to, to become more enlightened in a sense? Like if we bring awareness to the state where we're to the situation that we're triggered by, then that's a way for us to go towards deeper understanding and, like you would say, the path to enlightenment, it's essentially. It's exactly that, yeah. And anybody who does, you know, couples coaching or communication counseling, you know, at all well, has some version of paying attention to what you're feeling and what you're needing and what's your state. Maybe are you projecting or exaggerating anything? And are you able to listen to what they're feeling and what their needs are? And that's the relationship connection level of it. That's an important level. That's an embodied level. But we're look, looking at how this goes even deeper. All of that is showing us where we're disconnected from source, where we're disconnected from ourselves, from the real fulfillment of that longing for, for love that's, that's really more about us. It's about our hearts closing and it's about us contracting. It's about trauma and triggers ultimately. Right, right. And then, and being, being willing to be with that and then, and then open up again, like just being that's with it. it accepting it and then yeah. opening. And, and it's, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of detail to what is in this landscape. What will we encounter and how can we navigate that skillfully? That's why I mean, my core training where people learn about this has four levels to it. And they're each a big full three day weekend training. And then there's more things I do besides, but we have little week, little evening workshops and we have 
monthly events here at uh, in Seattle. We have a Tantra temple called Devanta here in North Seattle, and they're donation-based monthly events. And then there's evening workshops, and then we do these weekend trainings, and we can go very deep into getting our, our sea legs and achieving some mastery with it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I know that we are going to have to go to break again soon, um, but I'd love to get more into more detail on that when we come back from from break. I'd love to hear specifically about you know how you how students can work with you and you know kind of what what those levels are and you know how people can get plugged into your world because this really is it's a practice and it's it's a practice that that you have to, you know, engage in every day, you know, on a, on a regular basis. Otherwise, um, oh, anyway, that's what your work is about, you know, and, exactly and I'm sure that, that. you yeah. have skill. It gets, in- it gets easier and easier. In fact, once you start seeing the landscape through this lens, it's automatic. It's just how we keep, can keep moving towards what we want. It starts leading us. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll we'll go to break, and I look forward to uh, to hearing more details when we get back. Again, you're listening to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, and today my guest is David Amiri. Thank you. Winning at the game of money. Lynn Brown is now offering Full Spectrum Finance, a progressive 12-month program that will help you to navigate through the mechanics of financial expansion. Finally, a financial planner who looks at the full spectrum of money and abundance, engage you in the mental, physical, and energetic aspects of finance. This is Full Spectrum Finance. Are you ready to get into it? For more information, go to FullSpectrumFinance.com. Tune in to the Psychic Professors Show, The Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio. Featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship. This hit call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net. Tune in each Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio said to a friend, I am trying to be less stressed. I am hoping to meet someone special. Or how about I am working on getting a job I love. Hi, I'm Eve from Elite Tarot, host of the weekly show Mainstream Metaphysics Radio. Words like hoping, wanting, and trying may seem innocent. However, they carry with them emotional weight that actually blocks energy. Next time you start to say these words, say instead, I am becoming less stressed. I am looking forward to meeting someone special. I am pursuing a job I love. While your brain may resist, note how your body physically feels as possibility of success suddenly appears. As an intuitive coach and professional tarot card reader, I work with clients worldwide on using energy effectively to embrace joy. If you'd like to schedule a session, please visit my website at EliteTarot.com. That's E-L-I-T-E-T-A-R-O-T.com. Tune in each month to Synergenetic Living Radio, where Rick and Grace Paris discuss the synergenetic way of life, what it means to truly change your perspective in life, what it means to take control of your life and manifest your true desires. For more information on Rick and Grace Paris and Synergenetic Living, check out SynergeneticLiving.com. Get clear on the life you desire and the current life you are creating and what is between the two. Synergenetic Living, living life loud. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. All right, we're back. This is Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake. And today we're talking with David Amiri. 
And the topic is triggers, Tantra, and sacred union. All right. So uh, we've been talking about triggers and how they show up in our, you know, family situations and our intimate relationships and, you know, how we deal with that. And we've been talking about this on the, against the background of sacred union that really it's, we live in a non-dual universe. It's, there's not really, really, when you get down to it, there's not good and bad, or this should be happening, or this shouldn't be happening. It's really all love. And uh, it's in, we really do have the opportunity to be in union with everything. And this separation is an illusion. So that's that's very interesting. I'd be, I know we are going to talk about how people can get a hold of you and what your classes are and that kind of thing. But I just want to spend a couple minutes just talking about this. If we really are present to the potential of, you know, sacred union and that that reality, then we're choosing love instead of fear. And that shows up not just in our personal relationships, not just in our own spiritual path, but in how we approach everything. Can you say a few, a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, I love that we would want to choose love and that we would feel the importance of love. But I would say we're not choosing love instead of fear. We're not trying to get rid of anything. We're, we're connecting with love for everything, including the fear. And so when there's fear in you, when there's fear in someone else, that's my beloved. My beloved is having a painful experience. They're scared of me. They're attacking me because they don't, uh, they think I will not allow them to meet their needs in some way. What's going on? What's going on with the eyes of curiosity and love? And nothing is unwelcome. I talk about there's a big empty space where everything is welcome. That's actually us. When I say that the belief, the the you know needs, values, longings, and desires are us, it's not exactly accurate. That's closer to us. That's the real living energy of us, as opposed to stuff that's really unhinged and disconnected. But that's just the way to get in connection with the energy moving here. That's the contents of our experience, as opposed to concepts. That's the phenomena. Is the energy. What's true is who we really are is this big empty space where everything is welcome, where all the contents of our experience is arising and subsiding forever, and there's no problem in it. We're just interested in what's arising and what we can bring to it. How can we come to this creatively? How can we bring forth more of what we would like here? What's needed? How can we help? How can we serve this moment is what arises when we can connect with that basis of who we really are. I love it. Thank you. And that's what you teach. So if people want to get plugged into your world, how do they do that? You know, hit me up and find me on Facebook and friend me or look at the events I'm offering or especially please go to my website, sign up to my newsletter. My website again is passionateawakenings.com. Awakenings, plural with the S on the end. And you know, I love to talk to people. I offer a free consultation where people can say, is this really right for me? Is this going to help in my relationship or help me with the things that I'm struggling with? What do you do in private sessions? What are your trainings and workshops like? You know, come talk to me. I love connecting with people. And I do offer a lot. We're actually streaming the, the Trigger Happy Workshop this Tuesday. That is first- tomorrow. That's if tomorrow, isn't it? So yeah. <laughs> tomorrow evening from seven to ten thirty, come to my come to our temple in in Seattle, uh, or law or, or or register online, and I'll send you the link for how you can participate via video conference. Uh, and awesome. Dive in. Dive in. Okay. This is yeah. full contact work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. And then and you offer um several uh events like throughout the month and then you have your weekends, your your level one, two, three, and four trainings coming up. I'm very the- excited and proud of how the the core training has matured and evolved over the years. And there's four levels of it now. The first one is called erotic devotion, but there's a secret and a mystery on why it's called that, and it's 
is kind of less sexy than you think. It's not about, oh my God, I'm going to get naked and be all erotic with strangers. It's not that. It's really like what we're talking about here. And everybody is really within their own kind of healthy, authentic boundaries in the moment. It's not about the sexy stuff part, although there will be some opportunities to be juicy where you feel comfortable. But it's mainly really learning the foundations of Tantra as a path of awakening. And just quickly, the other levels are level two is called Mm self-sourcing. Level three is called awakening the constant heart. Level four is called keys to freedom. And so I'm not going to say what all those are about, but if the erotic part of it, our sexuality, love, sex, and intimacy is the can opener, then help us to find our way into this world of awakening work. The goalposts is about working with power, working with our power within ourselves and working with power in relations with our, which has political implications and social justice implications and really starts to change everything because that's where the rubber meets the road and how this can spread out, not in one safe little relationship, but how can we be in union with people who are not aligned with us politically or where there's differences or where there's adversariality, there's a deep dive into that. And that's our power and that's our freedom. That's fabulous. That's I'm so intrigued actually, (laughs) because it seems like that's what, that's what our world and specifically like our nation needs now. I mean, I think that's, so healing. <laughs> so I'm trying to walk people one step at a time to this. This is my social justice activism is one heart at a time is how can we have a world populated with people who actually have the capacity and the, and the skills to navigate relationships of mutuality and that are based in mutual meeting of needs and that have the care and compassion and love an appropriate uh, intervention and protecting what's of value, protecting the integrity of people, living things, and the truth itself. Those are the valuable things that we want to protect, and we get really angry when we feel they're threatened. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like this is these are the skills that humanity as a whole needs to be learning and practicing if we're going to meet the challenges that we're stepping into now and and that you know it the challenges that are facing humanity on a global scale in the coming decades like this That's is the work that we need to learn if we're going to handle these challenges well if we're going to leave a world for our children that's better than what we have now. And the only way that we're really going to learn this stuff is if we can learn it first in our own lives. And that's, that's exactly why I think, right. and I, that's why I think this, this work is that you do that, you know, that's, this is what I try, you know, I try to do this work, it, you know, it's not the same, but it's similar. It's how do we figure out this relationship with, with ourselves, with other people, with, Everything that is, you know, in a way that's um, that's loving and that doesn't separate. That's based this on is, this is so what we need, and we can't even get a handle on what's going on socially and in these really challenging situations until we it starts to come into focus when we're starting to get a grip on how to meet our needs and how to really have those that love and harmony. And it it needs to start with the things that are closest to us with our relationship with ourselves, the people we love and care about the most and want the most from when we start to really get the hang of that and see that clearly, there's some big scales can fall from our eyes about what's happening in the bigger picture. And that's very present for me. And that gives me a lot of motivation in, in why in this work and what's important about this. Absolutely. And especially this time of year, you know, as we're, it's the holiday season and we focus on, you know, love and in peace and in harmony. And we share that, that vision for, for humanity in such a real way. And yet it sometimes can seem so distant and so distant. And that's what this work is about. Thank you, David, for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Again, you're listening to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake. You can get 
uh, more information about David at passionateawakenings.com. If you want to connect with me, you can go to my website, unadrake.com. Again, this is Your Juicy Love with Una Drake. Thank you so much, David. And uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Blessings. Thank you. You've been listening to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake. Tune in each month as Dr. Pat and I co-host together, creating juicy conversations. And every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. I interview amazing guests and you'll learn how to transform your relationships so you can stay juicy. To learn more about me or to listen to past shows, visit my website at unadrake.com.